Mr. Sherlock Holmes. This gentleman, is it discreet? Dr. Watts is my friend and partner. It is purely in the interests of your client that I protested. The matter is so very delicate. Dr. Watson has already heard of it. Well? Oh, thank you. Then we may proceed to business. You said in your note that you are acting for the Lady Eva. Are you empowered to accept my terms? What are your terms? Seven thousand pounds. And the alternative? My dear sir, it is painful for me to discuss it, but I can say that all this is done with the most careful consideration. And if the money is not paid on the 14th, then there will certainly be no marriage on the 18th. You are, of course, familiar with the contents of these letters. We shall advise our clients to tell her future husband the whole story and trust to his generosity. Well, then you evidently do not know the Earl. What harm is there in these letters? <laughs> the sprightly. <laughs> Very sprightly. The lady was a charming correspondent, but I assure you the Earl of Dovercourt will fail to appreciate them. Look at this. This belongs to... Well, perhaps it's hardly fair to tell you to whom it belongs until tomorrow morning, when it'll be in the hands of the lady's husband. And all because she will not find a beggarly sum, which she could easily do, simply by turning some of her diamonds into paste. It is such a pity! You may have noticed a small paragraph recently in the Morning Post. The sudden end of the engagement between the Honourable Miss Miles and Colonel Dawkins. Yes and its tragic consequences. That was tantamount to murder. How do you answer for that, Mr. Milverton? How a man conducts himself under such circumstances is a matter for himself alone. That is a monstrous assertion. It was you, and you alone, who caused his death. And the sum involved niggardly. Indeed, a mere 1,200 pounds would have settled the whole question. It's pitiful, isn't it? And yet here I find you, Mr. Holmes, a man of sense, boggling at terms, when the whole future and honour of your client is at stake. You surprise me. You do, really. The money cannot be found. Surely it would be better for you to take the substantial sum we offer than to ruin this young woman's career, which can profit you in no way. There you're mistaken. An exposure would profit me indirectly to a considerable degree. I have eight or ten similar cases maturing. If it is circulated that I've made a severe example of Lady Eva, I shall find the rest much more open to reason. Do you see my point? To see the contents of those letters. Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, I've been expecting you to do something original. Now, this has been tried so often before. Young Edward Croft, for one. Croft? The footman, Vike, who took the bullet that was rightfully yours. You've done some work on me. So you must know that nothing ever came of an attack on my person. I'm armed to the teeth at all times. 
And I'm perfectly prepared to use my weapons knowing that the law will support me. You may well have your chance to test your assumption. But you can't see me. I'm so sorry, but you will have to wait. Mrs. Hudson, I'm not going to disturb. Mr. Holmes, surely you don't believe I'd be so foolish as to carry my livelihood here in my pocket? Just making sure, Mr. Milverton. Well, now, gentlemen, I have one or two uh, little interviews this evening. And it's a long drive to Hampstead. Mm -hmm. <laughs>